Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley Daga, and I'm very excited to be here with you today uh, for our webinar, Exploring California State Universities. Uh, we have a packed agenda today, um, so I'm very excited to have everyone here um, to join us during this presentation. Uh, let's see here. Oops, okay. All right, um, so just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Uh, we do ask that you keep yourselves on mute and possibly your cameras off. And this just helps with any distractions to our presenters um, and the participants who are listening in as this is going, going to be a one hour uh, webinar, but it's gonna be a lot of information that will be provided to you today. Um, and in addition to that, um, you should have received a couple of um, things for today's uh, um, webinar. One would have been your agenda. So um, we'll start off with the California benefits and our um, link, our local interagency network provider will, uh, coordinator will be on with you. And then we'll have Alex from CSU Fullerton and then uh, we'll end up with um, the education um, portion of it with uh, Derek Rose. Um, in a, the email, you should have also received a link to our veterans resource book. This That link is gold and so is this book, but it has tons of great information in here um, that we're going to share. And so, um, you know, we do ask that you reference back to this if you do have any questions in the future. Um, and then we also do have the contact information that'll be provided at the end, um, at the end of the book. And we'll also provide this information to you throughout the presentation. And once we're all done with the presentation today, we'll also have a Q&A panel at the end. Uh, we do ask that if you have any questions throughout the presentation that you send it to uh, CalTAP questions. And uh, that I will be um, I will be behind that um, answering any questions that I can or sending them off to the presenters um, if it can be answered right on the spot. And this next slide here is just a, oops, sorry about that. It's just a quick guide on how to send us a chat. Um, you just hover up or at the bottom or um, top or bottom of your screen, or if you have, um, if you're on your phone, you would just click on the more and then just find the chat function that we have there. All right, and so uh, let's see here. So let's go ahead and get started on our CalTAP overview. All right. And so again, my name is Ashley Daga. I'm one of the training coordinators here on the CalTAP team with the California Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm very, very excited to be here today uh, for numerous reasons. Uh, one, being a veteran myself, um, I'm also a reservist, but uh, being a veteran myself, I, um, when I learned about this program, I went full in. I started learning more information about the benefits here in California because not many of us know. So I'm excited to be able to share this information with you. One moment here, there we go. Okay, and so uh, what is CalTAP? So um, CalTAP is, is designed to inform and connect veterans of all areas of their earned federal and state benefits. And we do that with um, continued support and assistance um, and we do that by um, continuing to support and assist you with your needs as we know that it changed over time. Um, and this is the way we do it through our webinars, but then we also have our pathways that we have listed here. So our core curriculum, um, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and then we also have a service providers option as well. And again, this is just a quick snapshot of our veterans resource book. Again, it's gold, great information in here. Um, check out the PDF version that we sent you so you can find out more that we have. All right, and so to find us, you would simply, you can Google CalTAP uh, or CalVet, I'm sorry, and then we're usually the first one that pops up. And then once you're on our um, webpage there, you can click on CalTAP and we're always there in the center. Uh, once you click on that, it'll take you to our pathways page. And again, this is all our different pathways we have listed. Um, the great thing about this uh, web page here as well is that we have our archives that you can go ahead and view some of our um, previously recorded webinars and find out what other things that we have been talking about in, the, in this past year. All right. Sorry about that lag there, guys. Okay, and so um, how can I use CalTAP online? All right, so for this purpose, we're gonna go ahead and go into the core curriculum pathway. And once you're in there, there's about 11 different modules, but we're gonna go over module five, which is a California benefits. All right, and so what are my California benefits? 
Again, in the Re Fredgen's resource book in chapter one, that's where it starts off. But another great thing about this uh, first chapter here, it lists all the different link regions that we have within the state of California. And again, um, I, we will have one of the links here who will be presenting um, the information he has and what they do as well. All right, and so the college tuition fee waiver, um, this is near and dear to my heart. I won't go too much into detail with it, but basically, again, it just waives tuition and fees at any state-funded school, uh, whether that's a UC, CSU, or community college, all the way up through the dependence um, doctorate. Um, again, we'll go into this a little bit more detail, but it's a great benefit for uh, your dependents to utilize um, while they're in school. Another great program we have is the DMV's program. So uh, the veteran's driver's license. So basically what this is, is that you can get uh, the word veteran listed on your driver's license. You do have to go to the CVSO to obtain a form and um, bring that into this, to the DMV um, and then pay a small fee as well. But a great thing to have, so you don't have to carry around your DD form 214 uh, with you. Next thing we have is our honoring veterans license plate. Uh, you, we have lots of different insignias that you can uh, review on our website that um, you can possibly get on your um, license plate. And then lastly, the motor vehicle registration fee waiver. Um, this is if you have a 100% VA disability rating through the federal VA, um, you can contact um, the CVSO as well to find out more information and then uh, go to the DMV for this. All right, and so for those who enjoy the great outdoors, we do have um, outdoor activities where you can get your licensing um, reduced or your fees reduced. Uh, so for hunting and licenses, again, that's your reduced your annual fee for fishing and hunting. Hunting, um, You do have to have a specific uh, rating. So again, you look back in our book or on our website, it'll list that. And then you also are able to get your state park pass. Uh, you can get it for the no cost use um, to all the basic um, amenities at the state park system for including uh, camping. All right, and then we have our tax programs as well. So the disabled veterans property tax exemption, um, if you are, um, rated at 100% through the uh, VA, the federal VA, you're able to contact your county assessor's office to see what you can do to get that um, exempted. And then there's also, um, there is a cap to it though. So uh, be sure to look into that. Um, and then there's a business license tax and fee exemption. So if you're a business owner, you can look into the different um, exemptions you can get for your business. And then lastly, the Disabled Veterans Business Enterprise Program, also known as DVBE. Um, if you're wanting to sell goods to the state, um, you can go on the website. You can look this up on our website for more information. All right, and then our CalVet home loans. And so this is different than the ones that the one that you hear with um, the VA home loan. Um, this is specific through the CalVet. Um, they provide financing for veterans, competitive market interest rate, low or no down payment. We, they have a great team over there. Um, so if you have any questions in regards to this, once I'm done presenting, I will put all the links and contact information in the chat function uh, as we are going along here. In addition to Caltab, though, we do have a women's veterans division. Um, they provide information, advocacy, outreach, and support to our California women veterans. Um, they partner with the California Women Veterans Leadership Council, a great group of, uh, a great team over there. If you want to get onto their, uh, their roster, you can go onto their homepage here, sign up on their roster, um, or you can send them an email and to just kind of find out information, but they hold webinars, um, they have, um, on a monthly basis, they send out emails and things of that nature, nothing too excessive or anything like that, but a great group of um, great group to kind of get in touch with there. And then in addition to our women's division, we also have our minority and underrepresented uh, veterans division, similar to the women's division, but they provide information uh, and they provide information advocacy, outreach and support to our um, California minority and underrepresented veterans. They help with unnaturalized veterans in California with their citizens, citizenship and naturalization services. They also have a roster in which you can sign up on to receive emails on events, webinars, things of that nature that they have going on throughout the month. And then you can check out some of the other links that they have here as well. All right, and so, uh, in, so then we have our long-term care facilities. Um, they provide um, care for veterans 
when it comes to medical, dental, pharmacy, rehabilitation. Um, and they also provide things ranging from independent living, memory care, assisted living, um, things of that nature. Uh, but these are all the different locations that we have. Um, I do recommend that you contact the location if it's something that you're interested in, um, just to kind of see what their eligibility requirements are, if there's a wait list and things of that nature. And so in addition to our nine na national cemeteries, we do have three state cemeteries um, here within California. And these are the locations here, Seaside, Redding, and Yachtville. Similar to the uh, long-term care facilities, they may have eligibility requirements. So I highly recommend that you reach out to them to find out um, more information. And then our common veteran websites. Um, I'm just gonna go over a few, few here with you. Uh, the first one, of course, is the VA.gov. Here you can access and manage your VA benefits and healthcare. Um, these are the different things that they have on the website there. Um, I utilize this web page often, not only for myself, but to help others kind of find different things that they need for what they're looking for. Next is our eBenefits webpage. Again, another website I use very often. Um, you can go in here and manage your benefits, look up, you know, you can get your certificate of eligibility for home loans, things of that nature. And these websites all kind of link back to each other. Um, so just, just know that they all kind of inter, interlink with each other. Lastly, once you're in the VA healthcare system, there's a My Health EVET, um, a great website to go on to, to, if you're, you know, to communicate with your doctors, get any prescriptions, uh, refilled, things of that nature. And um, so this is my contact information. I know this was uh, very quick and a lot of information was thrown at you. Again, I will start sending out some of the links to the information that I just went over. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can contact me. Um, and that's my contact information there. Um, and then also like us on Facebook to kind of see what we have going on. Um, at this time, we will have uh, Ben Gels, who will be coming on, and he will provide you with information in regards to what he does and his team. Okay, great. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Ben Gales. Uh, at Calvet, I'm what we call a link. Um, one of the primary jobs of a link is to provide information about benefits and services and to make connections to benefits and services. Uh, for veterans, uh, service members, and their families. Uh, we've been doing a lot of that, especially during COVID on the phone and by email. Um, that will continue um, to be a way that we can help you if you're interested. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is our link map. Um, we have eight links in the state. Um, the regions are color coded there. So this will allow you to find the link uh, that's closest to you that can best help you. Uh, you can see that our regions vary a good amount. Um, if you look at the top of the state there, you know, in the, in the north, it's, it's more rural and quite large. So our, our link, Cole, he's got a lot of driving to do. It covers a lot of territory. If you look at my location, it's that uh, tiny area down there in orange, um, quite small geographically, uh, but a lot of veterans here, so more dense. Um, so we, our, our areas vary, and it can affect how we do our work. But the bottom line, I think most important point is that we're all experts on services in our region. Um, so we're in a good position to help you uh, with connecting to, to assistance. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so what do we do? Um, well, as I mentioned, we provide outreach uh, to service members, veterans, and their families. We make referrals and work directly with established service provider networks. So in terms of how we work, um, when we make a referral, it is almost always the case that it's, it's a referral to someone, an entity that we know, uh, to an organization that we work with and we know. We're not making referrals because we've read about groups on the internet. Uh, it's because we're out in the community working with these folks. We have a good understanding of, of who they are when we, when we make a connection for you. Uh, we assist with local emergencies. Uh, so one of the most significant ways that our team has been doing that is with the California wildfires. So going on site to assistance centers and providing support um, and a lot of the same work we do in general uh, connections to needed services. And then we provide leadership and advocacy to local communities. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of us are very involved in collaborative groups uh, working to support veterans, um, groups that look at housing issues, employment issues, um, family issues, legal issues, a lot of different um, areas where we're looking at how to improve the coordination and delivery of services. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so connecting to benefits. So this slide 
really just prevents a presents a sampling of benefits that are out there that we can connect you to. We've chosen some here that exist across the state. Um, in addition to these, there's really a whole host of different nonprofit organizations that are more regionally based that we can connect you to. Uh, but in terms of what we have here, um, with employment and training, the EDD, um, they have folks, uh, veteran-specific um, folks that help uh, veterans find work. Um, they're generally located in what are now called America's Job Centers of California. You'll also hear people often refer to those as one-stops. I think the, the more formal name now is these AGCCs. Um, and in terms of California state benefits, uh, one of the most important entities that can help you in applying for state and federal benefits are what are called county veteran service offices. And so there's one of these in every county. Um, as links, we have good connections to these offices. We're ha happy to help facilitate connections, provide information about how they work. And then we certainly can help you with information about CalVet, a lot of the stuff that Ashley just talked to you about, college fee waiver, home loans, entrepreneurship advantages, driver's license designations, and our, our full host of benefits. Um, on the healthcare side, um, we can also certainly provide information about accessing VA medical centers and their clinics and vet centers that focus on uh, behavioral health. Okay, next slide, please, Derek. Okay, so that's just a quick, quick run from me today. Um, like I said, most important point today is feel free to reach out to us. Um, we are here to help you um, with really any question you may have. Um, so with that, I also just want to take a second to uh, briefly also introduce Alex Ortega, our next speaker from Cal State Fullerton. Um, Alex is someone I've had a, a chance to work with a lot in the last couple of years, uh, truly a great person, truly a, a great advocate uh, for student veterans and just does a lot of wonderful work in, in everything he does. So I think Alex with that, I'm, I'm handing it over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ben Gales. It's a lot of pressure. I appreciate those compliments. Um, yeah, I before right. I get started, I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Ashley, Derek, Mr. Gales um, for making this happen. A lot of behind the scenes work to, to create this information and access to all the student veterans and veterans in California. So thank you very much. True, true honor and privilege to be here as a, as a veteran, as a student veteran. So as Mr. Gale said, my name is Alexander Ortega. I am the Educational Access Coordinator for Cal State Fullerton Veteran Resource Center. And today I'll be doing a presentation on the CSU Pathways. Um, and then we can start it off with the next slide. So the mission statement for today, so this pathway session is dedicated to serving student veterans and all of the community partners that are here today with information seeking and the application process to the CSU system. This presentation will provide guidance to the prospective students on the overview of the system, the CSU admission requirements, the CSU apply application, and some of the best practices that we found for transferring student veterans. Next slide, please. So let's get started. So a little bit of the overview of the CSU system on the macro level. So the CSU system is the largest four year public university system in the nation. It is a driver of the California's economic workforce. Pretty cool fact that I found while doing some research for this, one in 10 employees in California is a CSU graduate and the CSU system awards half of all of the state's bachelor degrees. And the mission of the CSU system is quite, quite um, straightforward, it is to provide opportunity and access to higher education. Next slide, please. So continuing the overview of the system, there are 23 California state universities throughout California. There are eight off-campus centers. There's a total of 481,000 students enrolled for the fall semester of 2019 and 53,000 faculty and staff are employed in the CSU system. 95% of enrolled students are from California. Um, and then you can see some other data points here. 88% of them are first time freshmen. And then for a lot of our population, student veterans, 91% of student transfers come from California Community College. And then 50% of CSU students are students of color. And this is one of my favorite metrics, one of my favorite data points. One third of undergraduates are first in their family to attend college. And we refer to them as first generation students. So that's really a special number there. Next slide, please. So thank you for that. So a little bit of breakdown, a visual of the 23 CSU systems. I broke it down by region. So in the Northern region, you got Chico, East Bay, Humboldt, Sacramento, San Francisco, Sonoma. The furthest school up North in our system is Humboldt, Humboldt State. They're known as the Lumberjacks, a lot of big trees over there. And then you look to the Central Valley, they have five institutions, Bakersfield. And then if you look in the Southern region where Cal State Fortin is located, there's a total of 10. Um, Cal State Fortin is the only school in Orange County, Los Angeles County, you have Cal State LA, 
um, Pomona, Long Beach, and Dominguez Hills. And then down south, you have San Diego and San Marcos. San Diego is the, the furthest school down south. Next slide, please. So cool. So a little bit of transition from the overview of the CSU system. And now we're going to get a little bit more focused in, in the veterans lens. So Dr. Marshall Thomas is the director of veterans affairs for the CSU systems. And he oversees the 23 veteran resource centers. Um, a lot of times you also hear them referred to as veteran success centers. And they are the main hub of information and support for not only veterans, but military connected students. So for, for those of you who are not aware of that term, military connected is, is family members, whether it's a children, a wife, a significant other, husband, um, that, that are using the benefits of the veteran and attending higher, higher um, education. One thing that I always tell, you know, any student that I come across or any family member that I come across, if you're a veteran or military connected, the Veteran Resource Center or the Veteran Success Center should be one of the first stops you make on campus. Um, really, really build that community and really stay engaged, stay sur surrounded by like-minded individuals. And um, they take care of all your needs. That should be your first stop with whether it's through admissions, whether it's through financial aid issues, but really, really strongly urge everybody to stop by the Veteran Resource Center, get to know the staff there, get to know the students there, and they'll make your transition as, as uh, streamlined as possible. Next slide, please. So a little bit of the overview of the system with the veteran lens. So usually if we were in person or a camera's on, I would ask if anybody knows what the VetNet Ally program is. I just see some screens, so I'm just gonna go with it. So for those of you who don't know what the VetNet Ally program is, it's a, a campus awareness program. It's, it's, to be honest, it's one of my favorite things that I do here at Cal State Fullerton. And essentially what it is, is you have the VRC staff um, really teach military culture to faculty and other staff members on campus. And after they attend your, your session, whether it's four hours or eight hours, um, they get awarded a VetNet Ally sticker or a VetNet Ally badge. And the purpose of these badges or stickers is that, so the faculty members could either place it on their office during for office hours or place it on their syllabus. And really what that is for is if you're a student veteran and you see one of the VetNet Ally stickers, you know that that faculty member or that staff member you know, took time out of their day to, to really learn about our culture, to really understand some of the, the barriers that we face and some of the issues that we face, and, and more importantly, how resilient we are and, and how powerful we are on campus and how, how big of an ally we can be. So um, this is a great program. It was actually created by Dr. Marshall Thomas and a couple of his colleagues um, during his dissertation in, 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 his, um, in his pursuit of education. So it's one of my favorite things to do you know, glowing, glowing remarks from the faculty and, and the staff that we've, we've taught military culture to. And really it, it kind of assists them in how to work with our population, how to, how to be really effective with communicating with us and, 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 you know, being the best ally they can be as possible. So that this is one of my favorite things. And if you look to the left here, that Venn ally, ally sticker is from Cal State Long Beach. And then the one in the middle is from California State University of Fullerton. And then one on the far right is San Diego State. So I just used a couple of examples for you guys to get a visual. Next slide, please. Cool, CSU admissions requirements. I like this slide. You get to see kind of a, a visual of each mascot. Uh, here at Cal State Fordham, we're an elephant. We're a powerful, mean elephant. Um, so that's pretty cool. Next slide, please. So CSU admissions requirements. This is really the, the meat and potatoes, as our director, Mr. Cook says. Of, of, of really transferring over into the Cal State system. So one thing I do want to say, and I really want to be very vocal about it, is that I'm here to kind of speak about the CSU system in general, but I'm looking at it through the lens of Cal State Fullerton because this is the institution I work with. So one thing I want to say is each school kind of does things a little bit different. There are you know, four main points that each school focuses on, and obviously that's you know good academic standing, 60 transferable units, your golden four class is complete. Um, and that's one thing that I've noticed with my job is that students are, are not always aware that you must have those four classes complete before you become eligible for transfer. So whether you're a community partner that works with student veterans or you're a student veteran in attendance today at the community college level, really, really get to speak with your counselor and really stay on top of this part. This is one thing you wanna go into that, that office and, and talk to them about, hey, are my golden four classes complete? Do I have 60 transferable units? Um, 
because there are so many times we have students that are ready to transfer over and they be they may be missing a golden four class and then they have to reroute back to the community college and it's really disheartening it's really discouraging so one thing i like to tell students is really be proactive on that very be very vocal about it and then and then the fourth thing is meeting the gpa cutoff in 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 a parentheses here i have spring versus fall because this is something that i was not aware of as a student veteran so Depending on the institution that you attend, the, the four-year school that you attend, uh, I'm going to speak for Cal State Fortune, in the spring semester, it's only for transfer students. So your GPA um, is going to be a little bit less competitive than it is going to be in the fall. And the reason for that is in the fall semester, you're competing against not only transfer students, but all of the first-time freshman students. So you can be strategic. Um, when it comes to that, if you if you may be a little bit concerned about your GPA and you can decide whether you want to transfer over the spring semester or the fall, um, get with me or get with the center that you're looking into attending and um, ask them about the GPA requirements and the index for that for that year um, so that you don't get denied. So that's one thing that I would also you know, speak to your VRC about about the different requirements for spring versus fall. Next slide, please. So Cal State Apply, um, when I started working here at Cal State Fortune, this was the first stuck point that I identified early, early on with students is in the past, they would have a system called Cal State Mentor. And that system was designed where you upload your transcripts and the system extracts your classes and does it all for you. Well, when they shifted over to this system, this is all student led. So this really puts it back, the, the power back in the student's hands. So you have to manually enter each one of your classes that you've attended. And sometimes us, you know, we may not be aware of this and we may make mistakes and, and that could lead to, you know, a denial in, into, into the CSU system. So one thing that, you know, uh, community colleges do a great job on is their transfer centers. I would say use, utilize your transfer center at your community college. If you're a community partner, urge your, your student vets to use that transfer center because they have somebody designed to sit down with you, go over your transcripts and help, you know, kind of plug and play for you. So for the spring 22 semester, um, the enrollment period is opening up August 1st and it closes at the end of August. So it's the shortest window. So you have August 1st to the end of August. Um, and then for the fall semester, it's October 1st. I have December 4th here, but that was for COVID. It's usually October 1st to November 30th. So don't miss those windows. You know, sometimes us student vets, we like to uh, wait till, you know, August 29th at 10 p.m. I would say really get ahead of it, really get ahead of it. It's coming up here in a couple months. So start speaking to your transfer center. If for some reason you're uncomfortable with your transfer center or you can't get in contact with them, reach out to me. Um, whether you want to come to Cal State Fullerton or whether you want to go to Humboldt or San Marcos, wherever you want to go, my team, you know, the veteran ambassador team will assist you. And then for you to access the Cal State Apply website, I, I left the hyperlink for you guys there. And then just be aware, it's a $70 application fee per institution that you apply for. One cool thing about this is the application is the same for all 23 schools. So once you enter, you know, an application for Cal State Fullerton, you can also apply for up to three other institutions. So that's that's one of the cool parts about it. Next slide, please. So a summary. Let me catch my breath. I did a lot of talking right there. I know we're on a short short time frame, so I didn't want I didn't want to get in trouble. But a real quick summary is the local versus out of local for students. Verify with your local CSU. If you have any questions about Cal State Fullerton, contact me directly. I'll be more than happy to assist you. If you have any questions for any other CSU and you're having issue contacting them, reach out to me. I would like to be the, the liaison and try to connect you. If you're a student right now at the community college level, please, please, please verify that you have your golden four classes complete. Please, please, please verify you have your 60 transferable units and then make sure your GPA is as competitive as possible. Another fun thing that I learned about the CSU system when I started working here is that if you get denied or if you get waitlisted, there are such a thing as veteran exceptions. Um, due to the fact of you know some of the issues that we face as veterans, a lot of the CSU systems provide exceptions for us, whether that's a timeline exception, whether that's a GPA exception. So connect with your local CSU VRC. Um, 
for any reason you get denied or waitlisted, just do a double check and call that VRC and let them know, hey, I got denied. Is there anything that we can do? Um, it may have been an error, you know, so there's a lot of things that you have to look into. And then, as I mentioned in a couple of slides before, the CSU apply. During um, COVID, we started doing workshops and it was one of the most, I would, you know, I would say it was very successful. Um, we do virtual workshops. We've had up to 45 students on Zoom and we, we, we share our screen and we go step by step by step on how to complete that application. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me, reach out to our team. And again, it's one application is good for any 23 CSU. So um, uh, the real question, is any of this different for a dependent coming into the system straight after high school? No. So that's a great question, Allison. Um, the, the only difference that I would tell you is that to make sure whatever school you're interested in attending, um, their enrollment period. So as I stated before, for Cal State Fullerton, if you're a first time freshman, you could only apply in the fall semester. So if you guys remember, those dates are October 1st to November 30th. So that is one important thing. So if you're FTF, they're commonly referred to as, um, it's most likely gonna be in the fall. So remember that date, October 1st, November 30th, get it in early, complete your application early. Um, but if you're military connected or dependent, nothing really changes on the application process. You're still, you're still good to go on that. Um, next slide. Financial aid. So this is something we wanted to talk about. And I did a horrible job at this as a student myself. I didn't know that I was available, you know, I was eligible for financial aid. I thought, hey man, I got the GI Bill and they're just giving me a lot of money. I don't I'm cool with that. But there, there are so many financial aid opportunities for you. Um, be proactive, you know, really be proactive. And, and again, I, I know I'm harping on this, but connect with your VRC and let them know, hey, I want to, I want to apply for financial aid. Can you please provide me guidance and support? Each, each school kind of has different hit points and different, different times. But I know here at Cal State Fullerton, we're, we're really pushing the fact for um, the importance of financial aid. I think our director pulled some data points out and we looked at our students and a lot of our students are not applying for financial aid. So um, maybe if I could drill that in the head, that's really important. Check out FAFSA. The hyperlink is there. Um, uh, maybe later on in the presentation, I can share it to you in the, in the text box, but um, you know, just a quick thing I wanna also point is the FAFSA should be completed for each academic year. So each year you're in school, make sure that you're applying for FAFSA. Um, yeah, and, and then new applications are released in October for the upcoming academic year. And then a little bit of CSU information, but um, uh, please, 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 any waivers for application fees. There are waivers for application fees. Um, that's a great question. Um, it's based off of your AGI, your annual gross income, and it's from the year before. So that's a really, really good question. In the CSU application, the CSU apply, you have to enter your AGI for the year prior, and then that's how they determine if you get an uh, application fee waiver. So I have a sheet that I send out to all of our students on kind of a checklist to ensure that you're filling it out correctly. Um, one stuck point that I've, or one mistake that I've seen is that some students get confused on whether they identify as an independent or a dependent student, and that can skew your results and that can skew whether you get um, a fee waiver or not. So my contact information will be in this slideshow, in this in this presentation, reach out to me if you have any questions, and I, you know, we could hop on Zoom, we could get on a phone call, and, and I'll, I'll help you navigate that. Thank you for that information you just submitted to. Next slide, please. Veteran Success Center. So I was hesitant on entering this because I know it's super small, but I I put together a list of phone numbers and direct hyperlinks to every single VRC, and I promise you, I promise everyone, it's the last time I'm going to say this you'll connect with your VRC, get them on the phone early. Even if you haven't applied yet, reach out to them, shop around, see which school gives you your attention and, and you feel comfortable attending and you feel like they're proactive um, and reach out to them and, and, and build a point of contact through them so that you have a direct point of contact. If you're going to Cal State Fullerton, which I assume some of you are, uh, I'm your point of contact. Call Alex Ortega and I'll be here for you all. Um, and then we'll share this. We'll share this as well so that you guys can have these, these point of contacts. Next slide, please. Questions and answers. I think I messed up because I was answering them at, on, the, on, on the go. But if anybody has an additional questions, I'm here. Um, 
I believe my contact information will be in the chat box and then also on the on the, on the site here, but um, aortega.fullerton.edu. I think I made the time frame. Shout out to me, Derek, son Ashley, I made it. So congratulations everybody for considering higher education. Keep pursuing, stay strong, and I'm here if anybody needs anything. Right on, thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate that. And um, yeah, if there are any additional questions, like I would probably anticipate for you, Alex, we can just hold those for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so towards the end. And then we will address all of the questions that came in through our chat and get them to the right person. I also wanna to touch on um, this entire presentation um, will be recorded and posted to our website um, at a little bit later. So if there's any um, you know, contact information or any slides you wanted to revisit, this will be made available on our website shortly. So with that, we will go ahead and transition um, into our educational benefits and best practices and recommendations pathway through the CalTAP program. Um, I also just wanna take a, a minute to really reiterate uh, what Alex was saying. Um, and literally, Alex, you took the words right out of my mouth um, in saying that the Veterans Resource Center on campus should be a veteran, a student veteran's first stop whenever they're considering going back to school. Uh, just a little bit of background on myself. I'm a Navy veteran separated uh, 2011, about 10 years ago to the date, actually, June 17th. And, um, you know, I knew that I needed to be continuing going to school to get my GI Bill to keep that money going in. So I drove to my local community campus um, and I said, hey, you know, I'm ready to enroll in college. Uh, you know, what, what are the next steps? And that visit to that campus's VRC really um, kind of set the, the trajectory and, and the pathway for me to, you know, eventually transfer to a CSU, get my degree and, and all the good things that have come after that. So really just want to thank Alex for providing all that information, um, you know, regarding through the lens of the CSU school system. But what we want to do today is kind of supplement some of that information with your veterans benefits and how that can apply um, to your educational goals. So again, um, we'll go ahead and push push forward through that. So um, as you've seen already a few times today in, in our intro, uh, this is where you can find all of our pathways through the CalTAP program. And if we wanted to get started and focus on our education pathway, we would just simply click education and that will bring you to the five modules that lay within that pathway. Everything from selecting a school, exactly what your education benefits are as a veteran, and some of the differences between the community college level, the CSUs, as you've, you've heard just previously with Alex, and as well as the University of California school systems. So, um, you know, we just kind of want to revisit exactly what your educational benefits are as a veteran. And we can't talk about that without discussing, you know, the post 9-11 GI Bill, which I'm sure a majority of student veterans are already familiar with. But just to revisit, um, you know, you do have your 36 months of the Chapter 30, Chapter 33, um, which is that post 9-11 benefit and the forever GI Bill um, entitlement if you separated after 2013. Um, so typically it is, you know, 36 months of benefits, but the VA has a rule called the rule of 48, which means that if you are using um, combined benefits with let's say post 9-11 in conjunction with a program like um, veterans readiness and employment, you could be eligible up to 48 months total. So just keep that in mind. It's typically 36, but it could be 48 if you're using um, two separate programs. So that forever GI Bill, um, it does end that 15 year limit on your GI Bill usage. Um, it provides full benefits for Purple Heart recipients, regardless of how long um, that veteran served. And it does help to restore some of the GI benefits um, if students experienced a permanent school closure while enrolled for whatever reason, whether it was, um, you know, accreditation with that school or, you know, it was a predatory, um, you know, learning institution, something along those lines. There are programs uh, through the Forever GI Bill as well as some state resources here in California um, that can um, help you recover some of those costs if that was the case. 
So to continue on the forever GI Bill, there is an increase in payment of over $2,300 a year. Even if that veteran has less than 12 months of service, I believe as it is right now, if you served a minimum of 90 days active duty, you have at least 50% of your GI Bill entitlement. Um, along with the forever GI Bill comes a STEM extension or a STEM scholarship. So if you are pursuing a degree in any one of those fields, um, there is an extension available to you and we can continue on that. Um, it provides up to nine months of additional post 9-11 benefits up to $30,000. And the reason that is, is if you're pursuing a STEM degree um, or cert certification, you're typically taking a lot more classes and units than what that 36 month of GI Bill benefits is going to cover. So there is a priority entitlement to that STEM extension if you have 100% post 9-11 GI Bill eligibility. So let's say if you served your four years honorable um, active duty, you get out after four years, you have your 100% um, entitlement. Uh, the STEM itself can't be matched by a pro, uh, the Yellow Ribbon Program, and we'll touch on that just briefly. Um, and STEM is not transferable to the dependents, um, such as the GI Bill benefit is before uh, the veteran left service. So just to quick uh, touch quickly on the utilization of your benefits, um, Alex previously mentioned the transfer requirements uh, to be admitted into the CSU, um, but for uh, graduation purposes, it's 120. It's 120 minimum credits to obtain that bachelor's degree. And it's important to remember that a lot of the prerequisites or remedial classes may not necessarily count towards that graduation requirement. So sometimes if you're a new student, maybe you're you know, just taking a, a, a couple classes to get your feet wet and get readjusted. You know, those classes, they may get certified for your GI Bill, but they don't always necessarily count towards your ed plan. Um, so it's really important that you're working with um, a counselor or, you know, a Veterans Resource Center um, to go over your ed plan and making sure that it's, um, you know, that you have, a, I wouldn't say a perfect ed plan, but making sure that your ed plan is designed to get you all the classes you need um, and utilizing your GI Bill time effectively. So. Um, just a kind of basic calculation, if you're enrolled full time um, fall and spring, which is 12 units and the six units for the condensed summer courses, that GI Bill is only going to cover um, up to 116 credits. So what does that mean? It's more oftentimes than not, you're going to be coming out of pocket for that last academic year or maybe academic semester. I mean, you're going to find need to find a way to supplement um, those remaining units. So what we've done here is to kind of give you some tips and tricks and some strategies on how to stretch out your GI Bill um, to make sure that you're using it most effectively. Tip one um, is that you can always take more than 12 units. Um, you know, I just like to say that, you know, you can take more than 12, but you don't necessarily need to feel pressured to take more than 12. It is just a strategy. I would say maybe um, take care of your transition first, see how many units um, are appropriate for your uh, life, your home life, your work life, your, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, our, our mental health is kind of the most important. So it's a strategy if you're able to. So to, to kind of touch on that, if you take more than 12 units, um, let's say you took 15, you're obviously going to get paid the full-time rate because uh, 15 is more than 12, but the GI Bill will not charge you more than the full-time rate. So basically you can, you know, knock out more classes and still um, only be charged for 12 units at a time. So doing that, it can often lead to fulfilling your graduation requirements uh, maybe one semester earlier or maybe a full academic year earlier. Okay. Um, tip two is kind of the opposite of taking more than 12 units. You don't always have to certify for the full 12 units. So if you certified at only three quarters of the time, that could stretch your amount of months out from 36 months to 45 months. Um, let's say you still wanted to go full time, but you're only certifying at three quarters, you could um, find a way to supplement that remainder one quarter of the time or those remainder three units. Because um, it's important to remember if you're going three fourths of time, you're 
only going to be getting three fourths of the amount of that BAH rate. So um, Alex mentioned earlier about financial aid programs, which is always a great resource. Um, but specifically, if you are um, at the community college level still, you could take advantage of a program such as the California Promise, which essentially waives your tuition and fees at a community college level. Um, you know, ideally or essentially, you could use that entirely at the community college level and save your GI Bill for when you transfer. Um, that's kind of falls into the lessons learned kind of category for me, just kind of like Alex said, I wasn't aware of these programs when I was going to school. So I was, you know, all about getting my GI Bill and my BAH. If I had to do it again, I probably would have saved some of that um, for when I really needed it towards my graduation requirements at the CSU. So just keep that in mind, um, financial aid that's available to you. Uh, tip three, we always encourage veterans to participate in work study programs. Work study pays um, federal or state minimum wage to perform VA related duties. Um, often a lot, of, a lot of the students who are working on campus in these veterans resource centers are oftentimes work study students themselves. It's a really flexible work schedule, works around your course load. Um, and it's a way to offset that additional cost of attendance if you needed to come out of pocket to maybe pay for a course or two. Because um, it's important to know, uh, I think we all know for student veterans, we don't get that BAH in between semesters, which is, um, you know, uh, kind of needs needs to be planned for and making sure that you're uh, kind of have that financial literacy so you're not uh, any, any anything unforeseen during those semester breaks comes up. So you just definitely have to plan ahead. Um, so dropping a class or actually getting a failing grade in a class. So if you just withdraw from the class, um, it's not going to affect your GPA, um, but it will affect that BAH stipend. So let's say you certified in the beginning of the semester for 12 units, you didn't like the class, you dropped it, you would have to recertify for the appropriate amount um, to make sure that you're not receiving an overpayment on your GI bill to where you would owe uh, the VA money back or anything like that. Um, a failing grade, it's not gonna affect that stipend or that um, BAH, but it will, of course, set you back in your academic uh, pathway um, and affect your GPA and just make it more difficult for you to get through your education as quick as possible. So just keep that in mind. Tip five, um, Alex, Alex mentioned this already. Like I said, took the words right out of my mouth. Use those VRCs. Um, it should often be your first stop um, on campus. It's a great way to get plugged in, connect with other veterans who are also going through the transition, get a tour of the campus, get a lay of the land. Um, you know, oftentimes it's a nice relaxing place if you just kind of want to get away and maybe um, do, do some of your work um, and just really to build off of that camaraderie um, that we're all used to in the military. So another great resource. <clears throat> Um, Alex mentioned financial aid a little bit earlier. There is uh, FAFSA um, as well. There's the California Promise that I mentioned. Um, there are always scholarships available. Um, you just kind of have to do your due diligence to kind of find out what they are and what the requirements are. Um, oftentimes, maybe you just need to write a short essay. Um, and it could be a little bit of money. It could be maybe 100 bucks, 500 bucks. But hey, it's you know free money towards your education, which is always great. Um, and there's uh, programs such as the Yellow Ribbon Program, just real quick. Um, if you wanted to attend typically a private university who has a higher um, cost of tuition than the highest in-state rate, um, the Yellow Ribbon Program is basically an agreement between that school and the VA to share the additional cost. So if you want to attend, let's say a Stanford or a USC or something along those lines, just make sure um, how much that school's contribution towards the Yellow Ribbon Program is. Um, college tuition fee waiver for veterans dependents. Ashley mentioned this um, in our introduction, um, but this is just another great program through CalVet. Um, this is one of our most commonly utilized and popular programs. Um, it is for the dependent children of veterans with a service-connected disability of 0%. So if that veteran has been rated by the VA at a minimum of zero, which basically means that, you know, the veteran is not receiving any type of compensation, but that veteran did have an injury or a condition from their service, 
um, their child can still use that um, to waive their tuition here in California. We get this question all the time is that does the veteran need to be a California resident? The answer is no, it's just the student. So if a veteran, you know, separated active duty on the East Coast, they're staying out there for a while or full time or retirement, but their children are out here in California, their children can still use it. So it has to be at a UC, CSU or California Community College. And it's fully, fully waived. There's no cap on the level of education. They would just need to um, meet the income requirement, which is the federal poverty level, um, while they're applying for that benefit. So great program. Um, highly encourage um, you to assess your eligibility for this if, you, um, if you'd like to take advantage of it. So all of this information that we covered is also found in our Veterans Resource book. Um, I believe we put a link to this in our chat um, so you can download it. This is really a great resource. It's basically A to Z listing of all your veterans benefits, um, local, state, federal, county, um, you know, where all of your county veteran services offices are located. So I'm not actually if you're in Orange County, San Diego County, Los Angeles County, um, those offices are really critical to actually applying for all of these benefits that we've mentioned today. So that's also going to be your first stop if you're applying for veterans benefits. So uh, that's my contact information, Derek Rose. Um, if you'd like to follow up with me, uh, you can send me an email. I'll be happy to take all the time um, to discuss anything that we covered today. Um, also, um, feel free to like us on social media, uh, Facebook, follow us through Eventbrite to stay notified of all of our webinars um, coming down the pipeline. So with that, um, I will go ahead and turn it back over to Ashley, who um, was receiving the queue of the questions through the chat. So I'll open it up to Ashley if there's any um, questions that need to be addressed. All right, everyone. Um, so at this time, we don't have um, any questions. Um, I, Alex had answered the questions that was coming through to him. But if you do have any questions, um, now is the time to send that. Um, but while we kind of wait for any questions to come through, um, I am sending out a survey link. Um, we do you know, appreciate any of your feedback or anything else that maybe you would like to see. Um, throughout some of these webinars. Uh, we do, we will have another slide with some of our upcoming webinars. We have one with, in regards to the um, UCs here in California. Um, so that will be um, coming up too. And um, let's see here. So no questions have come through just yet, but I would take a screenshot of this. Um, uh, just if you have any questions for us in the future. Uh, one question came through, are there any benefits for golf parks for veterans? I'm not a golfer, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I just know about the state parks and the fishing and hunting licensing. I don't know if anyone else has any feedback or <laughs> anything for that. <laughs> My only thought on that would be that, you know, perhaps locally you could see discounts, you know, at different golf courses. I, I think that just be in your area. You might have to check that out. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then they, there's a, um, this, Alex, this may be something more for you. I just wanted, they're just asking uh, the differences between applying for a graduate program and the open new program. I don't know if you have any knowledge in regards to that at all. Yeah, definitely. If it's um, for Cal State Fullerton, they're, they're two separate programs. So the extended ed program is a little bit different than uh, the, the main program, but all that information could be found through the, the Cal State um, apply uh, website. So Graduate windows are a little bit different, um, just really quick. So like, it, it depends on the program. So like, for example, some of our master's programs extend all the way into late January. Some of them extend all the way into March, April. So it's really specific on the program. If there's a program that you had in mind for Cal State Fullerton, shoot me an email and I could walk you through it right after this webinar if you would like. All right, perfect. And um, let's see here, a couple questions kind of are coming through now. Um, is there a fee waiver for disabled veterans? Um, so unfortunately, there is not the there is no fee waiver for disabled veterans. It's only open for dependents. But as Derek um, and I believe Alex has stated, you know, there you have your GI Bill, and then there's the uh, tuition fee waiver, uh, not tuition fee waiver, the um, financial aid. Um, 
uh, scholarships, and then the yellow ribbon program, depending on the school that you're attending. Um, hey, but, Ashley, can I touch on that real yeah, quick? Please. Yeah. So um, another option to maybe consider would be a program like um, Veterans Readiness and Employment, which is formerly uh, known as VOC Rehab. So that is not an education program, it's an employment program through the VA. But if you get approved for that program, you could potentially continue your education going back to school um, because you know that degree that you're pursuing will lead to gainful employment. So um, your best bet if you're a service-connected disabled veteran with I believe a minimum of a 10% rating um, and you want and you're maybe running out of time on your GI Bill, maybe speak to a um, VRNE counselor to see if you can continue using um, your education benefits under the VRNE program. And just to kind of dive one step deeper into that is if you have at least one day remaining on your actual GI Bill benefits, you can continue getting that BAH while you're using VRNE. So that kind of um, goes back to that 48 month total rule that I mentioned earlier of how you can stack two programs together. So it's kind of kind of tricky. It's not an education program. It's an employment program, but you can use it for education. So hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity. Um, so the same person just um, added on what if GI Bill has expired or exhausted and we want to continue education. You can still use the, the VRNE program. Um, you just would not qualify for that BAH rate. I believe, I don't know the number, but it's some type of uh, stipend that you get under the VRNE program. But, um, you know, if you did have one day remaining, you could still get that full BAH rate. So you can still use it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a VRNE counselor. I've never used the program. And I know it's kind of a lot of it is on a case by case basis with your employment history and your service connected disability. So I, I would definitely recommend maybe reaching out to a VSO or a VRNE counselor to kind of go over that. That's, and, and really quick, I, can I just add one thing? Because that's such a great point that Derek spoke to. And, and I also wanted to reference back the question on the the application waiver for the CSU system, when they ask for your annual gross income, so I'm going to preface it with I'm not a tax person or I'm not none of that, right? I'm not an expert in that, but, um, you know, be aware that, you know, if you're receiving disability or if you're receiving, you know, money from your GI Bill or your or VOC, uh, VRNE, that's non-taxable income. So just kind of be aware of that, you know, whether you um, document that, that you're receiving that money, that's a case by case up to the individual but that's one thing that I've seen make people over the threshold and then they have to pay the $70 fee for each school, where if you were not to identify that you're receiving that money because it's non-taxable, then it would put you under the threshold and make you eligible for four free schools, which that can be a difference of four other opportunities to apply. So just throwing that out there in the universe. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. Um, so a couple more questions here. Um, does the college fee waiver for dependents cover a medical school? Yes. Um, again, there are eligibility requirements in regards to um, like income qualifiers and things of that nature, depending on the veterans uh, VA rating. Yeah. And just to kind of touch on that is as long as that program is offered at a UC or a CSU and that um, you know, program is funded through state, through the state, um, yeah, they, they can use it. So um, I, I believe that when you get into like doctorate programs and even master's levels of education, um, even if it's offered at a CSU or a UC, sometimes those specific programs have different funding mechanisms. So it's just, you have to do your due diligence to make sure that that falls within their, the UC or CSU funding uh, mechanism like I've, I've used that word twice already um but yeah it, it, it should should qualify pending any type of um you know outside funding resources that's that's my understanding okay and then um alex this may be something more towards you um it says does cal state riverside have a veteran success center um they didn't see it listed and i tried looking myself and didn't see it on the slides either 
Al State Riverside? That's what that's what they that's what they typed. <laughs> okay, so so I'm, there there I don't there's no Cal State Riverside. You may be referring to Cal State San Bernardino, but there is a UCR Uni University of California Riverside. So there might be a, a little confusing. So good 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 question that we could segue into the difference between UCs and CSU. So. Um, I would just highlight if you're if you're looking at Riverside, then look into the UC system, and and I believe they should have. If you just look; it's a different type of system. Great question, though. That's a good good question. All right, and then uh, do you have any information on CSU program uh, for tuition for vets age sixty or over? Um, So I'm, I'm not trying to answer this question myself, but again, just with everything that we've kind of pro provided to you, um, if you have your GI Bill, um, if the, the financial aid and all that kind of stuff, that those are uh, what are specifically available to you. Um, let's see here. And then um, there's a person that said, um, they're tad confused. Um, shall, shall I rather use uh, VA chapter 33? or do a FAFSA application or can I use both? And I believe Derek had touched on that. You can use both. You can be getting your GI Bill and still apply for financial aid um, through the school, um, whether it's a, a Pell Grant. So you can certify for your GI Bill, get your BAH and you can still qualify for your federal financial aid programs. Um, Kind of goes back to what Alice is saying. Whatever money you're receiving on your federal benefits, you know that doesn't count really towards your taxable income. So you probably wouldn't have to factor that into a financial aid um, application. But yeah, you can you can get full BAH and your Pell grants um, once an academic uh, academic year, I believe. All right, and then uh, another question: Does STEM bonus apply to master's programs as well? I already have my bachelor's from UCSB, um, but I want to use OpenU prior to applying to a STEM grad program to improve my application graduate school. Good question. The Rogers STEM extension is only for an undergraduate um, degree or certificate, unfortunately. Okay, um, so I'm not sure if this person is a, is a vet or if they're a student or uh, the dependent, but it says some UCs campuses, some UC campuses offer life coach certification. Does a qual does this qualify for a fee waiver? The cost is very expensive. So I'm not sure. I think it's primarily just for your degree program. Sorry, there's questions. What, what, that was, the, what was the question, Ashley? Was it some type of certificate program at this point? Yeah, school? for a life coach certification, does this qualify for fee waiver? Um, that's a good question. I, I would probably have to check with this, with, you know, I would recommend checking with the school if, you know, you're, you're registering for that course and, it, and it's a mandatory tuition or a fee that you have to pay to the school to take that class under the, um, you know, the college fee waiver and entitlement, it waives the man mandatory tuition and fees. So unless there's some type of outside funding that um, has authorized that program aside from the CSU or UC. That's the only reason I would think it wouldn't be um, approved, but um, I, I would have to recommend checking with the school on that one again. Okay. Um, and so this next question, CSU has a fee tuition program for vets 60 years and older, asking if you are aware of that program to see how you can use the post 9-11 GI Bill if possible. So I'm not sure if Alec, maybe you're aware of that program or anything of that nature. I, I, I am not as aware. And um, what, I, what I would say is I can find that answer for you though. If you would like to connect with me, I will. we can do that today and I'll, and I'll make sure I get a response for you on that one. I apologize. Okay, perfect. Um, so I don't see any more questions coming through. I do wanna note that I did add the PDF version of the presentation we had today in the chat. So if you do um, need to refer back to it, I just recommend that you download it um, or you can send an, send your email through. Um, but we will have this posted um, in the next couple of weeks on our website um, so that you can review the recording and, um, 
and gain more information. Um, so as I said earlier, we do have some upcoming webinars. Um, this is what we have upcoming for June and July. Um, again, it's it's always subject to change. Um, we usually have more or less, whatever we have you, but if you go on our webpage, uh, on the website and on Facebook, you can always find um, the information there. Um, and then I also sent that that uh, link for the survey. So again, if you have any feedback or critiques or anything like that nature, please let us know. And next slide, Derek. I don't think I have control. Okay, and so this is again our contact information here. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Go to our web page um, and uh, check out what we have. Like us on Facebook. Send, let us know how we did on our on today's survey. Um, otherwise, we will go ahead and end this here. Um, and thank you again for everyone. Thank you for your service. Thank you for um, Alex, Ben, Derek, everyone who is in this um, to get this webinar going. We appreciate everybody here. Uh, we hope that you were able to gain some um, information today and we look forward to maybe seeing you in the future. Thanks everyone. Thank you. All right.